Well, welcome back, everybody, to episode 34 of the Tundra Cast. And today I'm here with Jake. Hello. And I'm, we're here with Shay. <laughs> What's up? And today we'll be talking about the newly crowned Stanley Cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, I wouldn't say newly crowned. I mean, yeah, they just repeated. Yeah, I, that's true. Uh, um, I mean, it was kind of expected after they uh, beat the Hurricanes. Um, but holy, I'm going to be honest, that final was so boring. That was not a good final. I mean, everybody knew that. Everybody wanted Montreal to win, but everyone knew that Tampa was going to tear them to shreds. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everybody, like, I was surprised when Montreal even made any of the games close. I wouldn't say they made it close. I said, I I mean, it's mostly Carey Price just filling them out. Yeah. Have you I seen, mean, did you I see mean, their effort in game one? I mean, it's just, I mean, they made it past the three rounds, which is crazy enough. I mean, in these finals, you saw what they flaw, and that's defense. I mean, you yeah. have Eric Gustafson, who is god-awful. Uh, John Merrill, who they picked up in a trade deadline. Duh. And then in game five, when Ross Colton scored, Joel Edmondson was just standing right in front of him, literally doing nothing. And it's just, it's crazy how their defense is so lackluster that they made it this far. And that's what really Tampa just destroyed them. And Carey Price just tried to carry it through, but obviously couldn't. Especially Ben Schrott early oh, on. Oh, God. It was so bad. Um, you know what? I when uh, when they played Romanov, I hated that decision, but it actually pre- it actually worked out in the end. So to the uh, the to the two Habs fans, uh, you you know who you are. Uh, I'm sorry, and I was wrong. But um, you know, it, it just sucks that Montreal lost. I mean, especially me being you know Canadian, I we I won in our cup here in Canada. But I mean, Tampa's just Tampa's just a damn good team, and. I mean, they're not going to be. They're not going to have the same group of players next year due to the cap, due to Seattle coming in. But I still think they're going to be pretty much. They're, they're still going to be pretty competitive. I mean, yeah. Santos is still going to be there. In point, Kucherov, Hedman, Sergachev, Vasi. The core is still there. So this team isn't going away anytime soon. But no. it won't. It won't be as deep. Yeah, and especially last year, they didn't even have Stamkos pretty much in the lineup. And yeah. this year. In these playoffs, it pre- they just with him in the lineup, they were unstoppable. Yeah, they were, they were, they were so good. Um, but you know what? Uh, you, but you know what? Uh, you got you just gotta you just gotta live with it. Uh, Tampa Bay, that they they, uh, they absolutely deserve it, and I'm happy that they won it in home ice too because we have we haven't had a home ice Stanley Cup champion since 2015 in Chicago. So yeah. I mean. Good, good for Tampa Bay fans. Good for that team who I mean, for a while now were known as chokers, um, and good for Stamkos too, especially with his leg injuries um, and such. Just to see him win back to back cups, that that actually puts a smile on my face. Yeah, and no one can take anything away from what Montreal did this year. Yeah. Uh, it was well, besides just... the fact that they're they're probably not going to make it next year. Still, but no, yeah, that that is true. But no one can take away this year from them. Yeah. It was. It was just a. It was. It the series could have been better. It could have been closer. But I don't know how, the Canadians could have done more than they did, especially since, you know, they don't really do much besides price. That's why I felt like they should have played Tatar because, I mean, I know he doesn't show up in the playoffs, but you need a scoring winger, and that's what Tatar does. So, I mean, they should have gave him a chance. Um, I, th- I I think after watching these playoffs, I know 100% sure that Josh Anderson is so overpaid. I mean, sure, he was clutch. In yeah, he's a clutch times, hero. But he only had six points in his entire <laughs> playoff run. So that contract's not going to age well, but... You know what? At least he showed up when the time mattered. Um, Deneau's gonna get paid. He's gonna get like what six and a half million. He was the great shutdown center for them. Uh, I don't know why they stretched KK near the end of the playoffs when he was on on fire throughout it. I don't know what Ducharme was doing, but 
you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason for sure for Montreal. I think they're going to add more players. I think they're going to think that they're going to be cup contenders when they're not. But um, just good for the fan base, good for the country. Uh, even though I know the Reigns in the U.S. didn't do well, um, all in all, it was a pretty solid run for the Montreal Canadiens. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I guess on to the next topic, unless anybody has any more thoughts about the Tampa Montreal series. Not really. It's just pretty obvious that Tampa was just was gonna win the cup no matter what. Um, not. I mean, there wasn't really any controversial calls this time around. I think the games were actually pretty were pretty called evenly. So yeah, it was just a solid five games. Um, in Tampa, Tampa was obviously the best team in this in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I hundred percent agree agree with that. Um, on to the the next topic. Uh, let's talk about the Victor Arvidsson trade. You know, I'm gonna let you do the molding here. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I know everybody's gonna expect me to get loud and start screaming, and I'll tell you right now. Your wish is my command. Uh. So let's start off. What the what? What are you thinking? What the hell are you thinking? You trade away Arvidsson. Yeah, he's he's been hurt a lot. He's kind of had a down couple of seasons. Blah blah blah. You trade away Arvidsson for a second and third. A second and third. Nick Foligno got a first. And you can't even get a first for Arvidsson? You can't get a, a, a prospect for Arvidsson? You just get a second and a third? And don't give me none of that, oh, he's been injured, oh, he's not worth that much. He is. He's still got the ability to be a 40-50 goal scorer. He's been getting better when it comes to consistency and healthiness. He was one of our best players this year. A year when everybody was injured, he was one of the less injured players. And he was one of our best players. Now, of course, I go on the worst website ever, Twitter, and I got into a lot of arguments with Preds fans who like to call me a homer and say that I'm delusional, but take a step back and realize how stupid you are. Nick Foligno got a first. Arvidsson could have gotten a first. Arvidsson has a good contract, and... Let, let's see, what are some of the things that people told, that people said, that were like, oh, that's why he's not worth the first. Hmm, let, let, let's see. Uh, hmm, yeah, he's just, oh yeah, he's too small. He's too small? Rocco Grimaldi set a record for most goals in a game for us, and he's smaller than Arvidsson. Martin St. Louis is one of the best players in history. He was small. Shut up about size. This game isn't about big, brooding power forwards anymore. And if it was, then why hasn't Vegas succeeded with Ryan Reeves? So don't give me any of that. And don't give me that there's more important players to protect in the forward core. There isn't. You have Forsberg to protect. Uh, you could protect Yarncroc. And uh, Trennan, I guess. Then protect Arvidsson. That's your four. You can't be this stupid. You can't. You can't be this stupid. Uh, and people are like, oh, he got hurt. It doesn't matter. if He's been having 30 goal seasons, one hurt for half of them. How are you going to be like, oh, he gets hurt all the time. Who cares? If he's still putting up good numbers, who cares if he gets hurt? And you know what? We we would have done a lot better against Carolina if we had Arvidsson. So, to everybody who thinks that we didn't get fleeced and, oh, it's a good trade, and, oh, maybe something good could happen with the second and third, shut up. Shut up. And I'll tell you right now, if, if anybody right now that's worse than Arvidsson gets more of a return than Arvidsson, that's another column of Poyle needs to be fired now. 
because you know what I had a bit of faith in him after the trade deadline and he seemed like he was going to do something smart because it seemed like he wasn't going to make any stupid rash decisions in the off season. And what did he do right a f right away? He did that. The dumbest thing you could have done. The dumbest thing you could have done is what you did. And his excuse for it is, oh, Seattle would have taken him anyways. Why not protect him? Because now I know what he's going to do. He's going to protect He's going to protect Duchesne, or he's going to protect Johansson, and we're screwed. And we're screwed, and... It, it because he always does this. He always makes stupid knee-jerk decisions that end up costing us. Like when he signed Turris to that big extension. Yeah, at the time it looked good, but there were massive holes in there that could have shown that mm, maybe he shouldn't have done that. Or when he signed Duchesne, that wasn't a good idea. Or keep I can keep going, and I don't want to take up the whole entire podcast with this, even though I could. But I'm gonna say this right now, Poyle, you're an idiot for that. You need to you need to step away from day to day operations because I have never seen a GM uh, get fleeced that badly, except except a Buffalo GM, and it's bad if you're getting fleeced like Buffalo does. You just need to lose. You just I don't know what else to say. That's about it. I. There's nothing more to say. I mean, also on the Felino thing, Felino was a UFA, and doesn't Arvidsson have like two years left on his deal? Arvidsson has like two four years, million. Three years left. Like he's on, he's under contract, and that's a steal of a deal for for a damn good player. Like, I I didn't understand it. Like I knew that I knew Nashville was going to try to shop players around. And when I heard Arvinson's name in the room, I was like, okay, Nashville can actually get back, you know, first round pick, probably a prospect. But, like, even the picks are in such a, a weak draft. Yeah, we got a second for this year and a third for next year or something. Like, a second this year should just be a third round pick. Like, this draft isn't good. Like, I don't, I don't get what Poyle's doing. And if he did, if he is saying that, if his rationale was he was going to lose in the expansion draft, then that's just stupid. He could have at least got a first for next year. Easily. Easily. He could have gotten one of the prospects. And if you're watching this video and you want to say, "Oh, we're wrong," and Arvidsson wasn't worth more, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me right now. Name seven or four uh, forwards that we would protect over Arvidsson. That need protecting. So I don't want to hear any stupid people saying, Oh, protect Gronland, protect Howla, protect Tolvanen. No. All of them are ex all of them are exempt or UFAs. So I want I so tell me what you think. Because if you can name four or seven more valuable forwards than him, then I will be baffled. Because I'm telling you right now, there's not. The only two I could come up with are is Forsberg and maybe Lukunen. That's it. Yeah. And that's a big maybe. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that does it for the Arvidsson trade. Well, now we can go on to the alleged Duncan Keith rumors, which involves uh, Jake, Jake's team and my team. Uh, now. I just... I don't know what to think. I, I, I mean, this... Trade isn't going to get executed unless the Hawks retain some salary. That's the thing. Yeah. And, I, and I'm pretty sure it came out today that the Oilers are going to start playing hardball. Um, I don't know how this gets done. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know who said, I think it was Scott Powers, um, that said the Hawks don't bla plan to buy out anyone. Yeah. Which which means that even, which means that they're not buying out Keith or they're not going to buy out a contract Edmonton gives them, like Zach Cassier and James Neal. So, like, I don't know how this deal gets done then. Because if the, if the rumor is true that Chicago wants Caleb Jones, which makes sense, it's after Seth, and another prospect, then why, why would Edmonton do that? I mean, Keith is, what, turning 38? I mean, yeah, he was once good. He, I mean, he, hell, he won the Con Smythe in 2015. Of course he's amazing. But mm -hmm. it's, 20, it's 2021, and he was not very good. In fact, he was god-awful. 
Well, I mean, to to be fair, Colleton was playing a 38-year-old. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. I mean, he's still reliable, but you can't play him 25 minutes. Right. He's at most a third pair defenseman now. Right. And which in, I think here in Edmonton, he would probably play second pair if Clefbaum is ready to go, which is why I think we're interested in him. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know why Edmonton is going to give a value for him. If anything, Chicago should give a value to Edmonton to get rid of Keith. And I understand that Keith has his legacy in Chicago. I mean, he's been there for a long time. He's won his three cups there. Like, I get the attachment. But Chicago has no leverage in this trade. If Keith, if in and it's and it's been said that the only place Keith would want to play in is Edmonton. And if the, and if that's true, Edmonton has all the negotiating power. They can just wait out Chicago. Keith can get pissed off. He can go up to Bowman and say, hey, Stan, trade me right now. I don't want to be, uh, I mean, he probably wants to be there, but I want to, I want to be closer to my family, which in return, Chicago needs to just take any deal Edmonton offers them. Like, th- that's the smartest thing to do. Yeah. I, I, th- I think this deal gets done later in the summer because I think right now, especially with the expansion draft free agency coming up, which is in 20 days exactly, um, that, like, I don't know, like, how it will get done because both these, both these teams don't want to take on the cap. That's the thing. Like, the only way this trade gets done if it's like Neil for for Keith and once again like Chicago doesn't want to take on a bad contract, so either Chicago buys out Keith, which probably isn't going to happen, or this trade doesn't get done. And if it does get done, like I I, I don't know who even wins it because I mean Edmonton gets Keith, and sure you'll be playing seventeen minutes a night. And the thing is, I don't hate Duncan Keith. I still, I would still love him on my team, but the thing is, it's just that price tag at five million, and as a, for a thirty-eight year old, exactly for two more years. And I mean, I get it. I get you want to add experience to the locker room. You you want to add those guys, especially you know with a young with you know a young team here. You know, someone that you know a veteran that wants to guide the young kids like McDavid. Um, you know, to show them how to actually win in the playoffs. <laughs> but I mean. But, I mean, like, if it's going to cost you a a, de- a good young defenseman, Caleb Johnson, and our prospect, and Chicago's not going to retain the cap back, then what's the value in that? Like, what's the purpose? And um, that's really my thoughts on it. Like, if if Duncan Key does somehow get bought out and M.T. can sign for, like, a one-year, like, at a one mil or one-and-a-half million-dollar deal, then that's fine because that's what he's worth. Mm-hmm. He's worth around two mil. But at the pr- at the money he's getting paid right now, he isn't worth it. So once again, it's either going to be you know a swap of Neil and Keith, and Chicago buys out Neil, which would be under two million for four years, or this trade does not get done. And I'm I'm leaning towards this trade is not going to get done. It's I don't think it's going to get done. And if it gets done, it's not going to be soon. It's yeah. going to be either late July or August. Yeah, it's going to take a while. I think the thing and, is is that. If Chicago wants Seth Jones like they do, so Ch- Chica- Chicago's gonna have to fold to Edmonton and and have and be like, okay, we want a lot less, because they'll need to they'll need to act fast because if the rumors are true, then a lot of teams are in on Jones for some reason. Yeah, and just I mean, I saw you know Hawks fans making mock trades, and it's just like. It's it's just not gonna happen. I really don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean, I saw trades like oh Keith for Jones and Lavois. Like that's not going to happen. No way Holland will do that. <laughs> like no way. There's no way that's gonna happen. Like I just don't, I, I I'm baffled. I don't know how this is gonna work. And once again, I get it. Like I get Stan doesn't want to retain some you know some accused money because it's a lot. Yeah. But you have to. Whether you like her or not, you're either going to have to retain fifty percent, or you're going to have to take a, or you have to take a bad contract back and buy that out. And... Like, like if this trade does happen, without a doubt, Jones is going the other way, so Chicago can learn Seth and sign him to like an eight-year extension for some reason. Oh God, <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the only way it's going to happen. And if Chicago, Chicago doesn't want to do that. Guess what? You can just piss off Keith even more. Like, 
do you really want to piss off, you know, like, honestly, like, Chicago kind of owes Keith this, you know, he, they kind of got to do him a solid. Like, he's been there for, uh, what, almost 20, yeah, around 20 years. Yeah, he was 20, drafted in 02. Yeah, 20 years, almost one, two de- it's almost been two decades. And he's won the three cups. He's a con spike winner. They should kind of do him a solid here. I Morris won't lie. winner. Yeah, like, he was one of the, he's one of the best players in the 2010s, defenseman-wise. Like, I just do him a solid. He wants to be close to his family. Take a bad contract back or retain 50%. Or you can just piss him off. Yeah, the only two teams I could see him going to is Edmonton or maybe Seattle. And that's exactly. a maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, I'm just going to say this. Why would a team want Seth Jones? GMs love him. That's why. Why? Also, GMs are stupid nowadays. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Poil. I'd, I'd say around around half the league is just stupid, and the other half are actually just smart GMs. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, but but you know, I could maybe I could see the deal around the expansion draft. Uh, maybe like I don't know, like even if. The trade is Neil for Jones and Keith. There should still be something coming back to Edmonton because they're still giving up Caleb Jones. And then I, I, I saw a trade, uh, you know, I mean, Jake mentioned Ian Mitchell. Yeah, that was but, my mock trade. But... Yeah, but I also saw, like, uh, like, I also saw people wanting Dylan Strome, which, I mean, like, I, I just don't know. Like, I'm, I, like, there's, like, a million possibilities for this, for, you know, this situation to happen, and... I just can't. I just can't see it getting done unless something drastically changes. I just can't see it getting done. No, me either. And if the Hawks do keep Keith, he's going to keep on playing twenty-five minutes a night. Yeah. As an almost thirty-nine-year-old man who's about to enter his forties. Yeah. I mean, he's not Nick Lidstrom. No. Like, Lidstrom was like what forty-two, and he was still playing first-line minutes, and he was actually good. But I mean, Keith. Wait. I mean, see him keep uh, Chris Chelios. He was like what forty eight when he retired. I mean, so, yeah, he was almost fifty. <laughs> ah, it's just uh, mind boggling to me that someone sees Keith and he say, "Oh, that's still a top four guy." <laughs> I mean, he'd be a good mentor to uh, to us, but I mean, not yeah. You can't play him in that top four. Again, that's... just just a mentor. That's all he'd be. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 this is going to be weird because they're going to have to act fast because um, cause if the Hawks want Seth Jones as badly as they do, then they're going to have to act very fast in this. They better not act fast. I, uh, well, I, I mean, the, I rumor, the rumor is right now that Seth Jones can be traded by the draft. So an announcement could come at any time, by the way. Yeah. It could come at any time. Well, you could see me molding at the draft stream. Yeah. Oh, that'd be oh. fun to watch. I'm just saying, we're going to be trading the 11th pick to CBJ, and it's going to be a, a hellhole. It'll be like, it'll be like Bockwist, the 11th, and Doc for Jones, 8x8. Eight eight. See, if Bockwist was still playing like he was in the beginning of the season, I really wouldn't have a problem. But he improved incredibly Yeah. by the end. I'm all for... Chicago trading everything away for Seth Jones. I am all for this. Ah, uh, yes, to bring it Kane Taze for Seth Jones. Bam. I mean, Seth Jones could probably score more goals on Nashville than Kane can. All right, all right. Okay. But let's not, let's not, let's not start arguing here. <laughs> hey, it's it's fact. Since 2017, you know, a 1.7 shooting percentage for Kane. And since 2017, we haven't been good. <laughs> I mean, that is. Fair. All right, but. Next topic, uh, it's another trade rumor. That's uh, Vladdy Tarasenko. He wants out. Yeah. Of course he does. And apparently it's because the doctors in St. Louis keep screwing up his shoulder injury surgery, I think. Surprising. And uh, I think I think the fact that he was, he was pissed off that he didn't get named captain or something along the lines of that. I didn't read the article by Jeremy Rutherford, but... Um, I think that's the rumor that he was just pissed off that he didn't get named captain, which I mean, it's reasonable. I mean, what O'Reilly spent like 
Two a old, year, well, like, he's been a year there. Two he's years. been a year there. Yeah, like, literally only a year, and then he gets named Cat. I'd be pissed too if I was Tarasenko. Yeah, Tarasenko's been there since like what, 2010, 2011? Yeah. Like. And then this new guy comes in out of a trade, and then he's named captain a year later. <laughs> I'd be molding too. No, I know. I, I I get that, and I you know. I I I think he'll he'll get traded. I think my, my pick for Tarasenko would be LA. Um, before the off, I mean before the playoffs ended, the rumor was that LA wanted to add add two top six right wingers. They got one in Arvidsson. You know who's a top six right winger? Vlad Tarasenko. You know you know who has assets? LA. They have the cap space. I, I mm-hmm. think it makes too much sense. Um, I think St. Louis would need to retain, especially with his injury concerns. But uh, he is still a damn good player. He can still get you 30 to 40 goals a year, for sure, when he's healthy. When he's healthy, yeah. I mean, I'll say this right now. If LA trades for Tarasenko and St. Louis gets more for Tarasenko than we got for Arvidsson, I will post a video on TundraCast of me jumping off of a roof. Okay, but here's the thing. Tarasenko has a name value. Uh, But here's the thing. So does Arvidsson, technically. I mean... Tarasenko has more. I, I mean, Tarasenko probably has more name value than Arvidsson. Well, that is true. I mean, at the same time, Arvidsson's been healthier the past two seasons. He's been a better player the past two seasons. He's got a better contract, and he's younger. And it, I swear to God. I mean, I think in a Tarasenko trade, what you're looking at, you're. You're, you're you're looking at your first round pick. You're looking at like a prospect, and you're looking at a contract back to St. Louis. Like that's what you're looking for. I don't think they're getting any more than that, especially with his injury concerns. Like, well, like let's use LA. You know, a first round pick in like twenty twenty two. Say they protect that because they're going to be a good team. Let's say like let's use a random prospect like Tyler Madden or someone like that or or, or for Kellyev, and to send a contract back. Let's just say uh, Dustin Brown, for example, and St. Louis retains two million cap space on Tarasenko's contract, which matches evenly with Brown's deal. Like, if I was St. Louis, you kind of you, you consider that you're getting back a potential top ten pick, you're getting back a top six prospect, and you're getting back a contract back, and Dustin Brown can play in your third line. Like, that's what St. Louis should try to aim for. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's teams are like offering that because that's what he's worth, and he's still a damn good player. I was on Twitter like earlier today, and I saw like, is it possible for a Kuznetsov for, for Tarasenko <laughs> deals? Like what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be uh, that'd be a blockbuster for sure, but n- no, <laughs> just no, just no. I mean, I know Washington's shipping around Koozie, but that just wouldn't happen. That's just, no, that's just, yeah. I mean, you got the Russian for Russian, uh, I guess, story or line right there. <laughs> cocaine user for cocaine user. Hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Don't do drugs, kids. Yeah, don't do drugs. But, um, but yeah. Uh, but you know, just hopefully Tarasenko stays healthy because he's actually he's a really talented player, like he is, and he's really gone like over the last three years. You can just never hear his name because either he's been injured or he's been shoved down in the lineup. It's the NHL cover curse. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, NHL seventeen. Mm-hmm. After that, just, he's just been invisible. But um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, just you know, just imagine him on a team like you no, know, I mean, I, I mean, obviously he's not gonna go to Toronto. But, you know, just imagine with a pure playmaker like, you know, McKinnon or McDavid you know, or guys like Matthews, like Dak, he can, like, I mean, Terry Singles hit 40 goals before. And if he's playing with one of those guys, he can hit 50. He's been heavily linked to the Islanders, apparently. I don't yes, I, 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 I saw it, that too. Yeah, it was, it was I, like Rangers or Islanders would be a perfect fit or something. Why are the Rangers on everybody? What the fr- What? The Rangers, the Rangers have there's decided a... that they are going to pay everyone. Just, just yeah, just like everyone's going to Toronto, everyone's going to go to New York. Yeah. But uh, I just don't know about the Islanders because that just doesn't seem like a Lou Lamorello type move. You know, like he doesn't seem like he doesn't seem like a Barry Trotz player. And, oh. and, I've, heard, and I've, I've heard rumors that they could leave Everly ex- exposed for the expansion draft. 
Leave Letty exposed. She is. Yeah, but uh, Trot and Lou love their old defenseman like Andy Green. Gee, he looks in the play. He looks so old. Yeah, he, he, was so he old. is. <laughs> he literally looks like he was just. Oh look, there's there's I don't know Nick Letty's dad in the eyes, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's like thirty eight too. So like he's old, but he, he looks yeah. fifty. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a great off season, though. There's so many trade rumors. Seattle's coming in. Um, for you guys, stay tuned for the expansion draft stream. Stay tuned for the free agent stream. Stay tuned for the draft. We're gonna have a lot of content this off season. Yep. Uh, it's going to be fun. There's going to be a lot of news. Hell, there could be a trade in 10 minutes. There could be a trade tomorrow. Like, we don't know. It's going to be It's gonna be a good offseason, though. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.